Hey, what's up? It's Kayla from Kayla the Video Maker 2. This video, I'm going to be talking about the Fast Track conference that I spoke at the other week. I'm going to go over some of the things I learned, and also I'm going to actually give a little lesson over the presentation I did, but I'm going to go in as much depth as I feel necessary. Well, this conference, it was about data. It was called Fast Track Your Data, hosted by IBM. And one of the things that was continually brought up throughout this conference was the, the idea of unlocking your data or getting access to more data that comes through your company. And essentially what that means is a company has access to a lot of data going in and going out and all that can get stored in databases, but then almost all of it gets archived and is never used for actual business decisions. So the goal of this conference was to teach business people and also developers and software people how to take more data from every day and use that to make business decisions. So one of the keynote speakers, Hillary Mason, she was talking about big data briefly. So the term big data, I'm probably going to slaughter her definition, but <laughs> I think essentially what she was saying is big data is getting all your data in one location so you can run queries on that data. And when you can do that, you can run analytics. Analytics allow us to make good business decisions. So that was the goal of the conference. Now, other than that, there was a lot on analytics and machine learning. Machine learning is when you teach a computer how to analyze analytics <laughs> and then teach the computer to either do things with that data or tell you things to do with that data. It basically gives the computer a new layer of intellect, if you want to think about it that way. <laughs> so the trip was fun. I learned a whole lot. Unfortunately, on my way there, I, uh, my flight was canceled, so I was like an hour and a half late, and I was supposed to be there like a day early. <laughs> and on my way home, I missed a connection flight, so the traveling was a little stressful. But besides being a grouchy, restless zombie the whole time, it was great. <laughs> my segment was talking about DB2, which is the IBM database. And also I figured out it's been rebranded to lowercase b, so DB2 like that. And specifically, I was talking about non-structured data. I was only on stage for a couple minutes, so I didn't have a whole lot of time to go in real depth. So the point of this video is to basically turn this into a class on what non-structured data is, why it's helpful, and how to use that inside of a DB2 database. So let's get started, hopefully you enjoy. So to begin, it's important to understand the difference between structured and non-structured data. So structured data is what we are so used to. This is based off of the relational model. Excuse me. And when we talk about a relation, we are talking about a table. So relation is just a fancy word that means table. And a table is broken up into columns and rows. So it looks something like this. And up at the top, we put the columns of the data we want to store. So every column will have sort of like a column header. So we could have this for like a user's table. We could have a name or a first name and then we could have a last name, and then maybe an email. And this is essentially the blueprint for the structure of our data. Every single instance of that blueprint has to follow this structure. An instance is put inside of a row, so our first user would go here. That is an instance of our structure for this table. And every single row has to follow that structure. But what if some punk comes in here and he's like, hey, I'm going to like put data in here that doesn't quite fit. So someone comes in here and tries to put some more data in here. So it follows the structure of the table so far, but then he goes in here and he wants to put in some extra data and he puts a phone number in there. You can see now that this data no longer fits the structure of our table. And this is a problem, and you're not going to be able to insert that data. In order to fix this, you need to issue an alter statement. 
And this is like the prime evil of all SQL statements because it just, for one, it's computationally expensive. Imagine having like millions of rows and then you want to alter the structure of the data. That's a bad idea. Additionally, it can leave you with nulls, which is basically the absence of values. And generally these are frowned upon. If, if you can avoid them, it's usually best. So let's say we alter this table and we go up here and we add a column for the phone. Well, the issue now is that these old rows, like this one up here, it doesn't have a phone number. So it's just going to be replaced with null. So now we're going to have a null for every single row except that new one that has the extra data. So that's just really, really bad. And the reality is sometimes we don't know what the structure of the data is going to be or if the structure of the data regularly changes then having these structured tables is just like a really bad idea. <laughs> so that's where non-structured data comes up. So non-structured data, you're allowed to have basically any structure for a specific piece of data. So this row can have three columns essentially, but this row could have four columns and that's okay. And that'll be more concrete once we go into actually doing this in the database, which I'll do in just a couple minutes. But for now, just try to think about this. Essentially what non-structured data allows us to do is extend a row to have extra data or shrink a row to have less data without having to change the general structure of our data. Does that make sense? Kind of a little bit. <laughs> well, one of the ways to represent non-structured data is with JSON. Now there's also XML, but XML is like really crappy, so forget about that. <laughs> and JSON is basically a standard. So as long as the way we interchange data follows a standard, then it's much easier to communicate between systems. And as the developer, you don't have to worry so much about the data structure. All you got to really think about is, hey, is this JSON? Oh, it is? Awesome, I can use that data. Or, hey, is this JSON? Oh, no, it's not. Well, then get out of my life. So what we're going to do is we are going to represent some data with JSON, and then we are going to insert that into a DB2 database. Now, a DB2 database actually supports both structured or relational data and non-structured or non-relational data. So you can kind of use those terms interchangeably. Relational is um, with structured data, and then non-structured you could say non-relational. And basically that just means it doesn't follow a table structure. Now non-structured data is kind of grouped into an overarching term, no SQL, which I believe stands for not only structured query language, but kind of getting off topic there. So let's just move on to the actual demo where I'm going to show you guys what I showed everyone at the conference. But now that we have this to prefix it, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's get started with that. All right, so I'm on my desktop. And before I go in and start programming and doing stuff in DB2, I wanted to talk briefly about what JSON is good for. Well, it's kind of like the language used to talk between two applications. So if you have one application and you want it to talk to another application, you can often use JSON as the language that they both understand, and they can talk back and forth through what is known as an API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. So it's like the interface between two applications. So just to show you what that might look like, here is some JSON from an API. And you can see that it, it kind of looks kind of gross, just a bunch of like symbols and stuff. But this is actually a lot simpler than some different ways to communicate between languages such as XML I mentioned briefly earlier. This is actually very lightweight, so it's really good. Because all it really has is the keys, which are these things on the left, and then the values which are the things on the right. So JSON is just a sequence of key value pairs. And with that, you can format basically any data you want. You can have simply a key value, which that would be the equivalent of a column inside of a structured table. Or you can also have 
an array. So this little uh, square bracket is the start of an array. And you can see there's one workspace inside of this array. It's not so important that you understand every single thing about how to structure JSON. All that really matters to us is, is it JSON or is it not JSON? If it's JSON, we can work with it. If it's not JSON, then too bad. <laughs> so it's a standard and it allows apps to talk to one another. So now that we understand what JSON looks like, let's talk a little bit about DB2. So this is DB2. Okay, so that's not the home page. Normally it would be like, right here uh, there okay <laughs> so when you open db2 it's going to look a little something like this this is where you can run sql to talk to your database but there, you can also do it inside of a web browser so if you go up here and click these little three lines and then click data connection details <laughs> you can click this link right down here and that'll open a browser and you can actually sign in through the browser and do everything inside of the browser, which is pretty cool. The tool you are looking at right now is Data Server Manager. And that is kind of like your one tool to do everything with DB2. What I'm going to be focusing on is running SQL or SQL inside of here. But you can also do things such as administer your database or you can monitor your database or you can configure settings if you're into that. What we are going to need for this example is some JSON. So there's this tool out there called JSON Lint, and it looks a little something like this. And why this is good is because this tool will tell you if you have valid JSON. So you can see here, I threw some JSON in here that I wrote, and you can actually scroll down here and click validate, and it'll say valid. And as long as it's valid, we know we can work with that data. We don't really have to worry about what the data is itself. So we are going to use this throughout the example. So I'm going to copy that and then just X out of that because we're not going to need it anymore. So what are our goals? Our goals are to create a table that can store JSON. Then we want to insert and then we want to select that data just to show you how simple it is to insert and get that data back out. So the very first thing is creating a table. So we're going to say create table and we can name it whatever we want. And then inside of parentheses, we're going to name all of the columns. And then we're going to have one column, JSON data. Now, this is going to store all of our non-structured data. The cool part here, though, is that you can actually store non-structured and structured data inside of one table. So for example, I could go up here and add another column, like ID, and make that of type int. And that is structured data because we're basically saying every single row inside this table that has this JSON data is also going to have an ID that is adding required structure to our data. But we're not going to do that right now just for simplicity. We're just going to focus on the JSON data. So when we have a column that stores JSON, we use a format called blob. Now a blob column is used to store binary data, but JSON is not binary we are actually going to convert it to a binary format known as binary JSON or BSON. And essentially what that does is allows the database to work with the JSON much faster. So we are going to run this and you can actually run it using control S. And yes, even on a Mac, it is control S. And you can see that that created the table. The next thing we're going to want to do is insert data into that table. So we're going to go in here, and I'll zoom in a little bit just so it's a little easier to see. We're going to say insert into custom data, which is the name of our table. And then we're going to say values. And then inside of parentheses, we're going to give all of the values. Now we're only going to give one value because we only have one column. The column is JSON data. So we want to give a value for that column. And the way that works is we just pass in all of that JSON but we have to use a built-in function. And I'll explain why in just a minute. But you're going to want to put sysTools.json to bson, and then parentheses. This function is actually going to take our JSON and convert it into that binary format I was talking about earlier, binary JSON. So all we have to do in here is paste our JSON inside of quotes. Paste that right there. And this is kind of what it looks like if you can see that is the entire statement. We can run this and you can see here that it inserted successfully, 
But the great part here is that this is non-structured data, so we can format the data however we want. So typically, the data inside of this group members would be kind of mapped to a user table, for example, and it would have one column, name. With non-structured data, though, we can essentially add columns to this individual row. So a better word would probably be fields or attributes. We're adding attributes to this specific group member. So we can go in here and add a comma and then add another attribute. In JSON, this attribute is called a key. So we change the structure and when we insert it, it still works. <laughs> and the great part is, is if you had a structured table, that wouldn't work. You can't just add a column like that. It would break it. <laughs> So we got the data in there. How do we actually go about getting that data back out? We need to create a select statement. So we need to say select, and at this point we're going to use another built-in function. So sysTools.bson to JSON. That's going to convert our data back. And then we want to select it from custom data, which is our table name. Inside of these parentheses, we need to pass in the column that is in binary JSON format which was JSON data. So let's run this and make sure it works. This gives us a result set. So when we click that, you can see that both rows are able to be inserted into the table and retrieved, but they don't have the same structure. <laughs> and that is the, the cool part about this. Now, non-structured data is not something revolutionary. DB2 did not invent this. <laughs> this has been around with other database systems, but the great part is, is that if you are using DB2 with structured data, it's super easy to also use non-structured data. You can use them both at the same time. Now, it's pretty cool that you can do this inside of SQL like this, but the reality is, as a developer, you're often going to want to work with the database through an application using a programming language. So there is a GitHub example showing you how to do this. So you can go to the URL github.com slash db2 hyphen samples slash db2 node.js. And inside of here, there is a uh, file index.js. And you just scroll down all the way to the bottom. And this is probably going to change by the time you guys see this. But <laughs> look at here, and you can see how they are inserting JSON data using the uh, sysTools.json to BSON. And I'm not going to go through all of this, but you can see that within just a couple lines, they're able to insert and select that data back out. So it's super simple. I would encourage you to give it a try just to get the experience of using non-structured data in DB2. If you do want to give it a try, I think the free version is officially branded as the Community Edition. So when you go on the interwebs, search DB2 Community and you'll be able to find it that way. I'll also try to throw a link down in the description so you can go directly to download it. In conclusion, you need to have a balance between structured and non-structured data. Non-structured data is not at all a replacement for structured data. We've been using structured data for like forever. <laughs> Don't consider non-structured data a replacement for all structured databases because sometimes it's nice to have some structure in your life. There's times for structured and times for non-structured. So consider the non-structured data augmenting our development experience, not revolutionizing and changing everything. I guarantee you you're still going to want to use structured data when you're developing apps and with that, with like DB2, you can combine structured and non-structured data inside of one table. So they're able to be worked with together very easily. Once you have this non-structured data, it allows you to scale your business and your software much faster. And when you can do that, you're able to analyze the data you have easier because your data is easily accessed and it's up to date and everything is just nice. So when you get to that point, you're able to start using that data to make wiser business decisions. So yeah, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see the actual presentation I did at the conference, I believe there's a video floating around somewhere here on the interwebs. So I will try to find that and put the link in the description. And also, if anybody wants me to like speak anywhere, like totally be up for it because it was a lot of fun. I didn't get murdered. 
and you know, it was, it was cool, it was cool. So <laughs> keep that in mind if you guys are considering people for future presentations. So yeah, thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video, and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.